untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Red Goblins, updated with Dominaria United as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and one of the new additions is Rundfeld Horde Master, 2 mana 1 1, giving other goblins we control plus 1 plus 1, and whenever the Horde Master or another goblin we control dies, we exile the top card of our library, and if it's a goblin creature card, we may cast that card until the end of our next turn. So an anthem effect that can also provide card advantage in the more grindy matchups is excellent and also works very nicely alongside cards like Firebrand, which we can sacrifice to deal 1 damage to any target, while still maybe exiling another goblin to cast, also nice alongside Skirk Prospector, which can sacrifice any goblin to add a red mana. We're not playing the full set of Prospector, since we're not a Muxus combo deck this time around, we're more of a normal mid rangey aggressive goblin tribal deck, so Prospector, while still useful, especially with some goblin tokens, isn't quite the same combo piece as it was in Historic. Instead, we're also playing 2 copies is a Fireblade Charger, which scales very nicely with some of our lords, a 1-1 one -one that when it dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so if we can pump it with our Horde Master, or maybe with the Bandit Lord, it can quickly get bigger, and then also become much deadlier once it perishes. Then we also have the full set of Bandit Lord as we mentioned, giving goblins plus 1 plus 1, and we can also pay a red mana tap it to deal damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under our control this turn to any target, so this can also take out opposing creatures in addition to maybe going upstairs. Then we're also playing two copies of Squee, Dubious Monarch, a 2-2 with haste, that when it attacks makes a 1-1 a goblin token that's also tapped and attacking, and can even replay Squee out of the graveyard for 4 mana if we're willing to exile 4 other cards from our graveyard as well, so Squee, a nice aggressive threat that can make extra tokens right away, synergizes very nicely with a Bandit Lord, as it can make two creatures for just one card, and great with any additional Anthem effects. Battlecry Goblin, another staple in Goblin decks nowadays, a 2 mana 2 2 for 1 on a red can give our team a plus 1 plus 2 and haste until end of turn, including itself, and if we have 6 or more power when the Battlecry Goblin attacks, we get to make another 1 1 a red Goblin token that's also tapped and attacking. Then the Snoop is our main source of card advantage, besides Horde Master and Ringleader, which we're also playing 4 copies of. Snoop lets us play Goblins off the top, also potentially gains their abilities, which can come up if we maybe have a Firebrand or a Prospector on top of our deck, even the Bandit Lord's ability we could carry over with our Snoop. And then at 3 mana we also have the full set of Warchief, giving all our goblins a 1 mana discount, as well as giving our team haste, which is the main ability we're interested in here, although the discount makes it easier to cast a goblin ringleader, which is otherwise a bit expensive at 4 mana, especially if we get multiple copies of Warchief in play, it becomes trivial to cast ringleader, and chain together a whole bunch of goblins as a 2-2 with haste, that when it enters lets us reveal the top 4 cards of our library, putting all goblin cards revealed this way into our hand, so it can be amazing if we hit two or three goblins with it. And then we're also playing two copies of Goblin Chain Warler, great in the more aggressive matchups at killing one toughness creatures from the opponent, but also 3-3 first strike that we can maybe pump with our author lords to hold off any author attackers from the opponent. Can even play more copies if we're facing a deck like Elves, so the deck can easily be fine-tuned in a best of three environment by playing more copies of Chain Warler, could make the deck more aggressive by playing Foundry Street Denizen, could make it more controlling by playing four copies of Ringleader like we are right now, so we're prepared to beat the mid-range and control matchups, and then could also add cards like Goblin Trashmaster to take out artifacts in the Parhelion matchups, could add a bit of graveyard hate as well, so there's a ton of great options available. And then our mana base has two copies of Den, not playing the full playset since late game it's kind of awkward when it comes into play tapped and we really want to be curving out, but of course a great creature land to have access to in those grindy matchups, and then a Castle Embereth can also pump the team great with our Fireblade Charger as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Firebrand, double snoop for card advantage. And the battle cry to pump the team. Opponents blue green. Possible they have some mana elves we can kill with firebrand. So let's see if I play a battle cry this turn. Yeah, it's still gonna take a while before we get an actual token with pack tactics, so Snoop still seems like the better play for now. 
opponent might be a blue-green counterspell type of deck, which uh, could have some flash creatures, might just be a growth spiral they're keeping up. Although if they have like a cutthroat, that's a reason to maybe hang on to Firebrand. Yeah, let's pass. Alright, it is just a growth spiral. Did not want to run into Wildborn Preserver either. And I'm not entirely sure what deck our opponent's playing here. But uh, if they're a counterspell deck, Snoop seems incredibly difficult for them to overcome since it's going to provide so much card advantage that they cannot really keep countering over and over again. Right, and there's a Frilled Mystic, so the opponent is indeed a counterspell heavy deck. And yeah, we'll just chill here, leverage our Snoop. And get free value off the top of our deck. Ringleaders also excellent, and another must counter. Make disappear, that's fine. And we'll pass. Not in a hurry to turn my team sideways. Best chance your opponent has in the matchup is getting a Night Pack Ambusher down to start generating wolf tokens while countering our goblins. Spectral Sailor. I guess I'm happy enough just killing here before they get to draw. Play another Snoop. We're gonna run the opponent out of counter spells soon enough. And then with Prospector, probably want to wait until Charger gets a bonus from a Bandit Lord, for instance, to sacrifice it and deal two damage to Frilled Mystic. Okay, and do I want to cast anything else? I guess I can sacrifice Prospector to cast another Battlecry Goblin and have it countered. Sure. It rewinds, untaps their lands, that's fine. Yeah, turn to Snoop seems pretty rough for uh, the blue-green counterspell deck. They don't really play any removal other than counterspells, so once it's in play it's difficult for them to remove. And it's just so much card advantage. Okay, now we do have a land on top, and they presumably have a counterspell for ringleader, so can uh, maybe bait out a counterspell with Bandit Lord. If it's a rewind, they can still cast two counterspells potentially. Right, Frill Mystic, so we get to resolve Ringleader, which will find a ton more cards. Don't want to sacrifice Snoop just in case they can kill one of them. Maybe Prospector itself, although the extra mana can be useful when having to pay for conditional counterspells. I think I still sack Prospector. Although once we sack Prospector, Charger also becomes less interesting. So, yeah, tough call. Maybe it's fine to sacrifice one Snoop since we have another one in hand anyway. Alright, there we go. And then Charger can attack alongside Ringleader. Opponent accepts the trade. And we'll pass. Have double Bandit Lord to try and resolve. And uh, Horde Master on top as well. War Chief, there we go. Now we're talking. So your opponent's probably setting up the Night Pack Ambusher here since they don't seem to be countering anything, so we only want to attack with four powered creatures. With double snoop in hand, I feel okay attacking with the current one. Now we can also activate Bandit Lord dealing three damage if we sack a goblin to Prospector, 
That plus the one damage from Firebrand can kill. Think we'll keep it simple, just attack Snoop and Warchief. Maybe Prospector as well, since Firebrand plus Prospector can kill. Sure. Opponent takes it. And uh, could activate Bandit Lord, deal 3 to the opponent's face. Is there any way for me to like combo kill my opponent here? Could play another Bandit Lord. Activate the first one for 4 damage. Firebrands one more. There might be a way, but counter spells make it a little risky, so I'll just pass and kill the opponent next turn. There's Ambusher. Okay, so play another Bandit Lord. That resolves. And then, sure, we'll play another Snoop. And could attack with a team. Could play another Snoop, really. Embarrassment of riches here. This seems fine. Can activate Castle. Another Ambusher. Comes the first one. Opponent still seems very dead. Even if they have a bounce spell for a lord. Which they did. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yorion, so probably control, and we typically don't mind facing control with this new build of goblins, Horde Master, and Snoop providing a ton of card advantage, and especially this version with the Ringleader is also a must counter, otherwise it's going to find a ton of action. And turn to Snoop is looking great here. Can even sacrifice Prospector in case of Sensor, so we can pay for it. March to Exile Prospector, should sacrifice it to itself in case of Squee, wanting more goblins in the graveyard. So we get to resolve Snoop. And the battle cry is not bad either. Any haste creatures are good against control in general. So we'll get our free value while we can. And prepare for a potential Supreme Verdict next turn. Alright, Absorb means probably no Verdict incoming. Now I don't think I attack with Snoop in case of Wandering Emperor, since I don't want to get it exiled. If her opponent doesn't have Supreme Verdict, Wandering Emperor is one of the few other removal spells they might have here. Although if they're splashing black, that's not necessarily true. Alright, land on top. So now... Maybe we can go for Horde Master, that way if there is a Sweeper we at least get some cards in return. So I'll try Horde Master plus Battlecry. All their opponent knows about our land, so might as well play it first. That resolves. Try Battlecry. And then... Still don't think we want to attack with a Snoop. Although we might be giving the opponent extra time if they have a Memory Deluge to draw instead. I'll send in Firebrand. They could Emperor make a Knight token to trade. Alright, that's fine by me. They're gonna exile it instead. Okay. Depopulate wipes the board. Opponent keeping up one mana. Not sure what for. And we exile two lands and a squee, so it could have been better. And a Thoughtseize gonna take our ringleader, fair enough. Yeah, that uh, Thoughtseize is actually pretty good here. But at least we get to cast a squee, which can finish off Wandering Emperor. 
and another Bandit Lord is a draw. Okay, at least your opponent's also down to one card in hand. And we have more ringleaders in the deck we can draw. Back to wandering. If they have another Wandering Emperor, they probably want to exile Squeen now. It's going to be a Teferi instead. Kim plus, and then hopefully for two mana that they get to untap, they don't have any relevant interaction. That resolved pretty smoothly. I'm hesitant to commit the second Bandit Lord in case of a board wipe. Thoughtseize is another concern potentially, but uh, sweepers seem more relevant. Okay. Do we have lethal if I play double Bandit Lord here? Squee would hit for 5, each goblin for 4. So that would be lethal, assuming no settled wreckage or author interaction. Yeah, I guess it's worth a shot. They definitely have something here. Alright, memory deluge to go digging. So don't need to worry about settle. Omen of the sea. Opponent seems very dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Good curve. Topping off with a ringleader. Opponent, the classic mono red deck, which I think is a rough matchup for us in general. Just because um, the combination of Annex plus Embercleave, we don't really have an easy way to remove. And uh, that tends to kill us before we assemble critical mass. Alright, never mind. Opponent, black reds. So maybe a slightly different build here. Bowman Courier. Opponent pausing with one black mana up. Not sure if there's some hand disruption in our future or maybe a fatal push. Well, Firebrand does not really line up all that well against a bunch of 2 2 creatures, so might as well attack with it. Play Snoop, and then next turn, Chain Worlder plus damage from Firebrand can help us kill a 2 toughness creature. Courier and etching attack. I'm actually fine trading Snoop for Courier. Since, um, yeah, we've got the ringleader for card advantage, so I don't need Snoop necessarily. And I would rather preserve my life total. Okay, and then uh, Chain Warler plus Firebrand can finish off Harvester. I don't think we care too much about etching versus a 3-2. And we can do it again next turn with another Chain Warler. Possible our opponents got some Graveyard Synergies, or maybe even Madness cards that they can try and cheat into play. This card's Embercleaf, so definitely points towards just an aggro deck. And another Beaumont Courier, but no good attacks. And uh, yeah, this Chain Warler is going to be pretty juicy. Kill Beaumont Courier. And Firebrand kills Etching. And we'll hit for three. And then Ringleader to refuel. Or we can just play Battle Cry and activate. Possible our opponent's uh, Rotting Regisaur plus Ember Cleave deck would make sense to uh, play black. And yeah, there it is. Okay, so Regisaur means I probably don't want to attack with Chain Warler. And instead we can try and double block with two first strike creatures. If they have an Ember Cleave, we could still be in trouble, although stuck on three lands with only one creature, they won't be able to cast it next turn. So what's our plan? If I were to play Battle Cry, activate attack, if they block a Chain Whirler, we still get in for four plus three plus one. So not quite lethal. So yeah, sure, let's play Ringleader here. 
finding double Warchief and another Ringleader. So we can very quickly empty our hands now. So our main concern now is getting comboed by an Ember Cleave. So we'll try our best to play around it. Register attacks. Sort of implies that they have a spot removal spell. If not, it just dies to Chain Whirler and our opponent decides to hang back instead. Okay, so yeah, opponents missed their land drops, so still don't have to worry about an Ember Cleave necessarily. Can play War Chief plus Battle Cry. And then we're pretty close to just killing our opponent with an all out attack, but I'll wait until next turn to make sure. Since we're not in any danger of dying on the way back either. Unless our opponent flashes in a creature to help cast Ember Cleave. Alright, Fiery Temper, and yes, we suspected opponent playing a few Madness cards to go with all those discard outlets. Registrar also could have enabled Madness and discards an Ember Cleave, so they might have another one in hand, which is why they've been missing land drops. Just cast another Registrar, so now they'll discard whatever Ember Cleave they might have in hand. And we get to have some fun here with another War Chief and Ringleader, perhaps. That seems fine. Could also play Bandit Lord, and then next turn play Ringleader. And any attacks. Block, block. Not quite lethal. But yeah, next turn we should have it. Opponent can't cast an Ember Cleave even if they drew one. With two attackers still cost four mana. So we should be safe. Ah, Fiery Temper kills Bandit Lord. And yeah, War Chief means I can play a one mana ringleader now. And uh, how about another one? Or we can play Prospector first. Don't know if that's necessary. Sure. Your opponent knows that they're dead. And packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Especially in a more grindy matchup. Could struggle against aggro and turn on firebrands. Points in that direction. So it's just about surviving. Hopefully find something like a Goblin Chain Whirler as one of our better blockers. And a Rimrock Knight, okay. Well, probably fine to play Snoop and trade for Rimrock if they offer. Opponent passes, okay, that's surprising. Get my free value of the top. And play Battle Cry. Could also play a backup Snoop, since we're not attacking with Battle Cry anytime soon. Sure. And the Battle Cry can also use a discount from War Chief next turn, potentially. So, surprise, your opponent didn't have a 3 mana play, but probably implies they have cards like Torbrand and Ember Cleave in hand. Torbrand means Firebrand can deal 3 damage to a creature. And Ember Cleave also a good reason for them to hang on to a Rimrock Knight instead of trading it. Alright, opponent kills Prospector, might as well make mana. And a Bone Crusher just casts for 3 mana instead of stomping. Okay. I'll land on top, so for now, War Chief into Horde Master seems appealing. Give us the biggest board presence. And then could even try and attack with a Snoop, since I'm okay if it trades. And don't really expect a burn spell on the Horde Master for one mana. Right, so now we're probably in Ember Cleave territory. Opponent sends in for seven. 
So Ember Cleave on Giant would hit us for 13 total. And can we kill our opponent on the way back? We very well could if we go Bandit Lord plus Battle Cry. I'm not going to do the math, but I'm going to assume that's enough. So I'll take it. Hope they tap out for Cleave. Which they did. And it's time for a no math attack. Alright, we got there. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is a little slow to get going, with no 1 or 2 drop. But we can hope to draw into 1, and then Chain Whirlers, not a bad catch-up mechanism if we're up against an aggressive creature deck. So I'll try it. And then Warchief into Ringleader is a nice sequence. Opponent on a wide life gain deck. So Chain Warlord might be able to finish that off. Bishop, so Angels. Angels can be rough. And as much as I want to play Warchief, I think I have to Chain Warlord to kill Veteran, otherwise next turn Resplendent Angel would gain 5 and make an Angel token right away. Which is just too much for us to handle. And yeah, there's the Resplendent Angel already. Okay, so can play Bandit Lord and then um, attack with Chain Warlord past Bishop. Or I can play Ringleader to be mana efficient and then next turn I can play Warchief plus Bandit Lord. I think I still want to get a nice hit in here with the Bandit Lord. Just to keep the opponent's life total low in case of a Righteous Valkyrie bumping the team but it's potentially going to lead to a slightly less efficient turn. Ooh, a Book of Exalted Deeds. Well, we can deal damage with our Bandit Lord to potentially kill an Angel that's got the token on it. Our Blade Charger's not bad. So, can't quite deal 3 damage. We can play War Chief plus Charger. Bandit Lord deals 2 damage. Um, but I think War Chief plus Charger might still be the play. And then attack with all except Bandit Lord. Can finish off Bishop if it blocks. And if not, deal 2 damage upstairs. Okay. Hoping to dodge a Collected Company. There's a Collected Company. Hitting Valkyrie and a Righteous Valkyrie, so that's gonna gain them a ton of life here. And make an Angel token end of turn. So yeah, all of a sudden we're facing an army of Angels and we could easily lose this. And in fact, we are very likely to lose this, I would say. Okay, um... Yeah, what can we do? Play Ringleader, what am I hoping to hit? We'll have three mana left, even another Bandit Lord is not enough, opponent's at 36 life. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to shrink down their team and we're just taking lethal in the air next turn. So yeah, kind of an insane turn with that company. But uh, yeah, not much we can do about it, I guess we'll see what we hit off Ringleader. Did actually hit some nice ones, Nother Bandit Lord included. If I play Nother Bandit Lord, I can deal two damage with one of them. Can play Battle Cry Goblin. Attack with a team except Bandit Lord. And then also threaten the activation. Not sure what we're trying to achieve, but uh guess we'll see how this pans out.
Okay, opponent would be taking five, six, seven. If I pump with battle cry, I can make it ten. Uh, so then they would lose the bonus. Yeah, I guess that's our best bet here, but I'm pretty sure we're still dead. Couple angels die. Opponent getting replacement one once. And another company. Yeah, that's rough. Finding double righteous Valkyrie. Well, we put up a fight. If they didn't have a backup company, we might have been able to get another turn, but uh, that's the power of green white angels. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Missing a 2-drop, but uh, Ringleader is going to be nice as our curve topper here. Opponent also on a red deck, and there's our 2-drop. Horde Master into Squeeze, a lovely curve. Burning Tree into another Burning Tree, perhaps. Nope, Earthshaker Kenra. That we can kill with a Firebrand, potentially. Although I think I'm fine racing for now. Going Horde Master attack for two. Staying back is pretty bad if our opponent has removal for Horde Master anyway. The alternative would be just sack Firebrand now killing Kenra. Especially in case of an opposing Chain Warler dealing one to the team. And then we also get to exile the goblin, perhaps. Uh, I can buy that. We just want to prolong the game as much as possible when holding ringleader. Instead of trying to outrace the red aggro deck, which can do a better job. So we can play Bandit Lord next turn. And a Rampaging Frostodon can be pretty scary, too. Okay. For now, play Bandit Lord. And hope there's no Amber Cleave in our future. Four mana, so both Torbrain and Amber Cleave are possibilities. Although Stomp killing Horde Master instead. Exiles Battle Cry, so we can still block Emissary. We're just taking three. But yeah, the Ferocidon punishes our Goblin game plan. So, can I somehow get three goblins in play to activate Bandit Lord and kill it? I think we're one short or one mana short. So, instead, probably play Battle Cry and Snoop. Can play Snoop first. Another Bandit Lord on top. And then probably hang back. So we can set up a double block now. Another burning tree is fine. So they're probably casting Bone Crusher then. Okay, that's acceptable. Just need to dodge Torbran and Ember Cleave pretty much. And then we might be able to figure out a way to kill Ferocidon. So if I play Squee, attack with it, and play Firebrand, I can get three goblins for Bandit Lord. Battle Cry enabling pack tactics would also do it. So that might be the play here. It's gonna deal us a bit of damage with Ferocidon, so I need to make sure we keep enough blockers back. So I guess I have the option of um, just attacking, and then having Firebrand on defense, maybe as a chum blocker. We'll trigger Ferocidon two more times. Yeah, that's fine, actually. And we're also threatening the activation of Battlecry. So we're down to seven. And 
And maybe I should have activated Bandit Lord before they get a chance to block, but now I can also activate Battle Cry if they were to block with Frostodon. Okay, that all seems fine to me. And then we'll activate Bandit Lord, killing Frostodon, as opposed to saving Squee, since we have plenty of leftovers. Trading off for the board also means Embercleave and Torbrain are less threatening. And then Firebrand will finish off Emissary, that seems fine. Okay, we cleared the opponent's board. And we still have a Ringleader and Snoop to provide extra card advantage. Can even get back Squee out of the graveyard. And probably turn the corner next turn. Chamberlain, luckily we have a Lord. So our goblins don't all die. Opponent passes. Prospector on top. So... Play Prospector, find a land. And if I get back Squee attack, I can kill Chamberlain with Bandit Lord before blocks. I'm sure there's other combinations that would be pretty effective too here. And then how much damage would we have total? 6, I think 12 total. So not quite enough for lethal but I don't think there's anything they could top deck to get out of it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand really needs a third land, but then it's off to the races. I'll try it. Maybe a lacking in card advantage a little bit if they kill Horde Master. Put on the red black. All right, Snoop might be our play now. Since Horde Master, we can play for one mana with the War Chief out. Stomp takes care of that. And then uh, Land would let us double spell next turn. Red Black can be a tough matchup if our opponent gets Kalitas going. Dodge the Liliana, but maybe another Stomp here. It's going to be Harvester instead. Alright, Ringleader. So, sure, we'll play War Chief. And then not really interested in trading. So we'll pass. Although now Kalitas could also leave behind a zombie. Right, kills Horde Master. Hoping to exile a Goblin. And Bone Crusher number two stomps War Chief. Okay. At least we picked up a ringleader, which is nice in a grindy matchup like this. And then ideally exile a goblin, draw land, and be on our way. Alright, found a squee. Not bad. And Thoughtseize probably takes ringleader. Okay. Play squee. And then as long as we can dodge Kalitas, we are probably fine. But that's the big problem card. Trespasser. Also a bit of a roadblock, but uh, not the end of the world. Not really interested in 2 for wanting myself to get past Trespasser. We'll just play Firebrand and pass. And then next turn, War Chief plus Bandit Lord can set up a nice attack. Croxa makes his discard. Goodbye, War Chief. And Thoughtseize will clear out our hand. Okay, so we're on empty. And our opponent's not too far from escaping a Crocs either. That was a good draw. Probably fine to trade War Chief at this point. And I'll hang on to Firebrand. Opponent probably blocks a 2 2. But then we can still maybe find an extra Goblin with a Horde Master. Opponent trades for War Chief. Falls to 7. Can we find another goblin? We cannot.
Heartless Act kills Hordemeister. Could kill Firebrand first to maybe find an extra goblin in the process. It might be worth it, just to find more action here. As opposed to keeping a 1-1. One -one. And we found a battle cry, excellent. So play that next turn, activate. And a Chamber Lord to boot. So land would be appreciated. If we don't draw land, then it's probably Battle Cry Activate. Which honestly might still be better than playing a Chamber Lord at this point. So yeah, they had a very functional draw, I would say. But luckily we dodged four mana Kalitas, which they very well may have in hand here. Discards Sorin, that one's more beatable. And uh, yeah, Battle Cry plus Activate should do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Snoop into a variety of three drops. And we might be up against elves, so Chain Warlord is going to be very important if we can avoid our opponent playing too many lords in advance to pump their one toughness creatures. Ah, never mind, it's Gruul Aggro Burning Tramissary on two. This is probably a pretty tough matchup if our opponent can get an early start with turn one elves and then tops off their curve with an Ember Cleave. So, not loving my position. Horde Master on top could come in handy. Another Burning Tree, which they must have drawn for the turn. So, no Ember Cleave this turn. Maybe a stomp. Okay. Take seven and a scavenging ooze as well. So probably playing Chain Warlord just to kill elves and hold off the burning trees. And then it's just scavenging ooze that can maybe attack past it if they've got another green source. Which they currently don't. So yeah, just a Spellbreaker attacking here, actually. And next turn, Ooze. So Chain Warlord doing what it was designed to do. Play defense. Burning Tree also attacking, just to maybe help grow the Ooze in the future. Gets us to 8. And then we want a double spell... Probably Horde Master plus Snoop. That way Chamber Lord can block Spellbreaker as well. And uh, yeah, hope there's no Ember Cleave. They're missing double green for Questing Beast, although they might be a Collected Company build instead. And that's another card we don't necessarily want to see here. Another Stomp, killing Horde Master. Could also get ugly if we try and block Spellbreaker. So we're still in a bit of trouble here. But I'm going for an all-out attack. Ramona Prunes also represents two damage. So if I block like so, I would take uh, six damage after they pump Ooze down to two, and then Ruins would be lethal. So I might actually have to chump with Horde Master. And then, uh, yeah, hope for the best. We'll get to exile a bunch of goblins, including the bandit lord that's on top. And we get to keep Chain Warlord around. And then we go to try and chum block ooze over and over. The land is good. So if I play War Chief, I can only cast Bandit Lord out of exile. So I might be better off playing both. And we'll pass, and we can maybe triple block Scavenging Ooze here. Pelt Collector is fine. And a land, so they can activate Ruins. Another War Chief. So they can play War Chief plus another Bandit Lord. Um, 
could also think about activating Bandit Lord, but I don't think that's super relevant right now. Okay, so we might be able to turn the corner soon. Don't think we can do so this turn. Opponent can grow ooze up to a 5-5 five five next turn. Well, maybe Battle Cry can attack alongside, let's say, War Chief, which would make a token. They can eat the token. Mm, maybe I should still leave more blockers back. Let's just pass. We may be able to survive an Ember Cleave if we keep everyone back. Although, it's still a card we want to avoid. And then next turn, if I play both goblins out, we can also activate Battle Cry. We might be able to quickly turn the corner. Another Bandit Lord, okay. So if I play this. Play Battle Cry. So, at the very least, I could activate two Bandit Lords to kill Ooze. But let's say I attack with everyone, we get two more tokens, and then I can activate Battle Cry afterwards. Opponent's got four blockers, so block my four largest. Twelve plus two tokens go through. Both tokens are gonna have four power. So, yeah, that should be lethal. Awesome. Very close one here against Red Green Aggro. But Chain Warlord able to hold the fort. Alright, so we get to see our Mono Rat Goblins deck in action. And I don't think Goblins are quite tier 1 yet in Explorer. We'll need a little bit more help, but the additions from Dominario United are a big step forward. So the Goblins deck can be built in a lot of ways. You could add more 1-drops to make it more aggressive, with the Foundry Street Denizen perhaps. And you can also play a very grindy game with Goblin Ringleader. So it's also a deck that's probably well suited for best of 3, as you can add more Chain Warlords against creature decks, you can add more Ringleaders for the control matchups and play more one drops if you need to be the beatdown so it can be very flexible in that regard can even add the trash master to take out artifacts in the parhelion matchups which can also be pretty tough to beat otherwise so very flexible deck with a ton of new upgrades here from dominaria so a good time to be playing goblins but for now wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.